now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. Hello and welcome to the All In Podcast. We are done with the LCS regular season. Uh, it was a long super week, but we are here to talk about it and to introduce ourselves into playoffs which happens uh this week in a couple days uh we're recording on tuesday so i think playoffs starts this thursday right um really really fast um yeah this thursday march 14th so mm-hmm. um how you doing kevin how did you enjoy super week and how's life overall super week is fun you know it's i just like having more games i i kind of wish that every team could play three games but i would also find with going straight to playoffs i just wish we had like it's March, right? And we're already in playoffs and I wish we had another split. There was all these rumors about it and it never came to fruition. So yeah, otherwise I'm doing well. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll get the three splits eventually, but I think for LCS we almost didn't even have LCS. So at least we got three we got two splits, right? It was That's true. <laughs> we're in a precarious spot. I mean, if we're being honest, like we are really relegated to the back end. Like our super week was all uh filmed and streamed from like the like from the closet and then uh our runtime in general is just a lot lower it's it's very interesting how much smaller um lcs has become but that's okay we're not going to talk about that right now because we commiserated over that on the last episode today we're going to talk about some interesting drama our favorite topic uh double lift and Dodo having a little beef. Um, I think the sh- long story short is that Doublelift was going to be on Team Liquid, maybe, or at least in talks to be on Team Liquid um, for their ADC spot. And there was talks to bring in JoJo as well. And he was told certain things by Steve and by Dodo to, to Doublelift's face. And it came out later that Dodo had very different opinions and was saying completely different things to JoJo. Um, and obviously Jojo never went to Team Liquid, Double Lift never went to Team Liquid, and Double Lift's pretty much retired and doesn't give a crap and is just leaking whatever. But um, yeah, go into more detail if you have any more info to, to share and like give your thoughts. Yeah, so on Double Lift's side, he basically said something along the lines of that there was a roster with him and Jojo on it, and they denied him, and he pretty much blamed Dodo for being the one who stonewalled them. He said, I believe the quote was, um, I think he said something along the lines of like, you won't play on Team Liquid as long as I'm here, or something like that. Um, and I I think he showed some apology that Dodo gave him before. Um and he used that as his context or his like his proof that this happened. Um, I think that the thing is Dodo replied later on, and I think Double Oof is kind of full of shit. Honestly, oh, interesting. We can, get, we can, we can do a back okay. and forth. Um, yeah. <laughs> but what Dodo said, and you know, I'm biased about Team Liquid, so obviously I will be biased here. I'm obviously going to disclose that, but. Basically, what he said was Jojo only wanted to play with Berserker, right? So if they couldn't get mm. Berserker, like, there's, like, all these iterations. Because as we know, when rosters go back and forth, you're going to be talking about, like, you know, if I can get this piece and locked in, this piece will come in, right? Um, and I think Doublelift probably interpreted this wrong. Because in my mind, like, there is a world Doublelift is right here. This is the he said, she said kind of thing. But, or he said, he said. <laughs> but the reality is, like, it's it almost always seems to be that if Doublelift has a bad interaction like he doesn't get accepted on a team he will come out and very one-sidedly leak stuff and you know lena will be in the background literally i think in this video she'll be in the background like (laughs) whispering and talking points it feels like uh and i just don't know if it's that cut and dry like i don't like in what universe right in my mind just logically would jojo would rather play with berserker or would he rather play with double if uh Mm -hmm. i think double if was a probably top three top four to carry on 100 days before he retired again but i i don't think i think jojo would rather play with the younger person who you know probably easier to work with probably has a higher ceiling in the modern era that's my thought yeah so okay interesting take i actually didn't even really consider the fact that um well, okay, I did kind of consider it. So he, I'll just say what I think uh, is kind of going through it because I kind of agree with yours. But also, I think what happened probably happened. It, it uh, the way Double is saying it, it's just not like how he's saying it. Like it probably wasn't 
as like aggressive as like Dota was like me or double lift or I'm jumping off the cliff. You know what I mean? It probably wasn't like that, but it was probably more of like, hey, as long like Dodo is the GM, he's like, hey, I'm working here. I'm the boss. No, we're not getting double lift. He's washed. I don't want to work with him anymore. Because my impression was that um, Dodo was a bit two faced, according to double lift, right? Where to double lift, mm. you would say, hey, yeah, we're going to think of signing Jojo. Here's, you know, it, here's what it would happen, look like if you were to sign up with us. And then behind double lift back to other people, he'd be like, no way, we're taking double lift. I actually probably think that's true. I That's just how businesses work. You tell the guy that you're working with a client that, yeah, I'm excited to work with you. We'll see how we can get for you. And then behind doors, you're like, well, I'm not working with that guy, actually. That, that guy, you know, we told him we'll think about it, but we're actually already done thinking about it. I think that's probably 100 percent true. Um, but the whole dramatic effect of I will quit being GM on Team Liquid after working here for like almost 10 years to not have double if signed. That's a little maybe there was something there, but that's like really extreme. Right. I don't think. I think you could have, he could have just not signed double if he's the GM, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, and to add I, extra I, context, like he left, yeah. guys, he left yeah. Liquid earlier he, when he they needed him. him. Yeah, hundred uh, <laughs> percent. After he kept phoning it in and saying spring, spring split doesn't matter, right? Um, so I I do think that probably a lot of the the literal factual things of like what happened probably did happen the way double was saying, but the way things are said and described and how people's characters are. Probably not as extreme. Probably not as dramatic. Um, I will say, Doublelift is the kind of guy who, like, I think he unknowingly and is just kind of, like, lackadaisically will create drama and create scenarios and describe them into being more intense than they actually are. I feel like that is right up Doublelift's alley, where he doesn't realize how much, like, fuel he's putting to the flame. Um, So... Yeah, that's yeah. kind of my guess. And I'm kind of glad, honestly, he didn't get signed. <laughs> I mean, I do want him in the league. I, I still think it's a better thing to have him in the league than on the side, looking like he obviously wants to play. But I don't know. Like The fact that he said, oh, I'm done, and then he uh, looked for options again makes me feel like he always wants to. He just says he's done just to save face if he doesn't find a roster. But he needs to find a roster that's good enough for him, and that's totally legitimate. Like You're actually yeah. a good player. You're not going on Immortals, right? Yeah. Um but I think this is the, this is just a leverage thing. They were like, okay, JoJo maybe didn't want double lift, and then Dodo might have. I think the comment literally says something like, "Sorry, the way I talked to you, double lift," which is a receipt. Uh, yeah. But he also said something along the lines of like, you know, um, I, I, what I inferred was that Dodo told JoJo they would go for Berserker if JoJo signed or something like that, which is like, yeah, that's business, right? Probably true. Yeah, I JoJo. probably I will. I believe it all, honestly. That honestly, what both Dodo and and Doublelift are saying, they line up enough where you just you take out the extra dramatic, overzealous pieces, and it kind of all makes it. They're telling the same story. Yeah, it, it's um, just like a mundane. It, it sounds backstabby, but it's literally business negotiations, unfortunately. And I, mm-hmm. I mean, there's no way Dodo's hiding this from Steve. By the way, that's the speculation. Yeah. Like he was saying, like, oh, you know, goes yeah, through, like, Steve. He knows he's not stupid, guys. Yeah, no, I think because I was watching the co stream with Double Lift, Revenge, and Speak Up for most of the weekend. And yeah, I, there's a little bit of a drama mongering, honestly. I, I mean, honestly, Double Lift's always been like that. Double Lift is a very knee jerky. So here's, I think you were kind of like insinuating or like kind of like suggesting that maybe Double Lift was like coming up with this to save face. That to me, it does not seem like Double Lift at all. I don't think he does that shit ever. I think he just shoots from the hip. Whatever pops in his head, he just says. And all of the saving face, like kind of strategizing political image, social image stuff is all Lena. So I don't I okay. think for Double Lift, he's just straight up like, he thinks something, he says it. And he realizes, oh shit, there are consequences to what I said? Uh oh. Okay. Well, okay. And that, yeah, I can so. accept that. That logically combines. Actually, <laughs> yeah. outwardly facing, that is what is being projected. But I totally can accept that Lena is probably the one telling him, like, okay, you, yeah, pushing to now you say, say this, this now course. you say that, yeah, pushing to you know, kind of, kind of show your image like that, yeah, because like I don't know, Lena is like that. I feel like right, she's uh, she was what she's the, a business person. She understands she's a business person. Like, yeah, she, she's she's not she's bad at it. At least she's not company. double lifts level. <laughs> no, I mean double lift is. He's a player for sure. He he grew up playing video games for sure <laughs> without a real job ever. <laughs> okay, another topic I wanted to talk about actually before we get into LCS because I was watching the costume was very enjoyable, but it was both the most interesting thing and I just thought it was really funny. So Revenge was talking about his time on Immortals and mm-hmm. 
he was talking about how they would uh immortals they were doing really poorly right and they would come in and one day he came in and he had to sit down and there was a binder and the binder was filled with like things that he had to do and he was going to get graded on on a point system and stuff and if he didn't do that it like it might affect his pay or might affect his image or blah blah and they had to do it right and i was like okay and he everybody like revenge and double lift are like going like that's ridiculous that's the most bullshit ever that's like super messed up that's not cool and to me as a person with a normal job i'm like that just sounds like normal job metric stuff like isn't that everybody has that like you have to show up on time you have to do these certain things to fill a quota or you'll get fired or you'll lose some of your pay or something like that like that makes total sense to me but these guys have never had a normal job right they've never had um been in an, an average company right they've always been in this very niche like esports athlete sort of scene where you know even if you were to go to basketball right basketball players have similar things where if you don't do this certain amount of practice certain amount of reps certain amount of blah 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 you're gonna get dinged you're gonna get in trouble you're gonna get talked to you're gonna get, maybe lose money i don't know so revenge it was kind of funny to see how naive he was <laughs> and like their whole like kind of group was naive about how companies work um because i'm not saying immortals was doing something great right they're just doing something very normal that they probably didn't execute well on i'm sure that that binder that they gave revenge was not a high quality list of things that he had to do and it wasn't explained well to him or anything like that but i'm sure other orgs like if you go to korea right or china i bet you get in big trouble if you show up late too many times to scrims right i'll bet you get in big trouble if you don't practice the way you're they want you to practice like you know it just shows to me that lcs teams are maybe a bit behind the curve in terms of just treat it like a business like you guys are a company you guys are here to make money and yeah i, th I thought it was very interesting kind of hearing that perspective um anything totally you want to chime agree. on yeah i think when philip aram aram whatever his name was got them to do that strike last year right and he talked about he was super surprised everyone actually showed up yeah like, i think that was like <laughs> that was pretty much the hint of like they don't do that you just don't get these people to show up. They're not professional. And like, yeah, you can say the league has matured, but who's coaching these teams? NRG is being coached by who? Last year, a bunch of former pros. Yeah. Then they're, yeah. they're going to propagate, a, you know, maybe a slightly better culture than they went through, but not by a lot, right? You just don't know what you don't know. So how are they going to be well-directed and, you know, be professional? We don't have to be like super corporate, you know, in ties or anything or suits, but we do need to like, earn our paychecks these guys were earning literally 10 times more than pros were uh, like eight years ago and they're working probably less um now that might not actually be true but they're just not working to the level they're being paid that's a fact yeah i mean i think uh double was even saying back in like 2016 ish time 2018 or in there people the average salary in lcs was like six hundred thousand dollars a year and that's really good for a person who might not even doing like half of the living up to professional standards that an average American employee might be working at, right? There, it's probably filled like you could be making six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars a year, showing up late to work, not really practicing, not doing what you're told, arguing with your boss every like that was rampant back then, right? And it's still rampant today. And all it goes to show that hey, yeah, we're getting paid a lot less now, and it's still probably going on. Um, so yeah, professionalism. Don't treat it corporate like you said, right? It is still a game. There is still like some level of humanity that needs to exist in it. But you have to mm -hmm. be professional, right? Like I wouldn't even be surprised if I I love Medios, okay? He's a great personality, but I wouldn't even be surprised if this is an aspect that Medios could not live up to when trying to hop teams and find jobs or whatever, is that he couldn't be professional and you couldn't argue professionally well with his teammates and with his coaches. And it gave him this stigma, this label of being hard to work with. And it's probably because I'm not saying it's all him, right? But some version of him, some version of whoever's talking to, they're not having a professional conversation, right? <laughs> um, and so there you go, right? I can hear it. I watch the dive. I listen to the dive every week. I can hear it in medios. I'm like, there's some level of like, you just don't have the professional demeanor where you're trying to make a point and, you know, it's not super polite and yeah people are gonna get upset in america at least right <laughs> um mm -hmm. so i get that um so very interesting little topic uh anything else you want to say about this area before we get into the games 
Yeah, I'll say like we you still hear stories about this, like locker rooms and sports and other games, right? Um, or other activities where there are people who also maybe a bit of a diva, a bit of whatever, you know, don't show up, might argue. So it's not like it's completely exclusive to esports. It's maybe more of an American culture thing in general. However, the 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 ultimate thing is like a lot of these people who can get away with doing that are the best at what they do. And if you're not getting those results but your habits haven't changed then like what are you worth to the org right Mm -hmm. um because you have potential like i think medios was quite good when he retired um yeah but the as anyone who's actually worked on a team i'm not even talking about corporate i'm just talking about a team right a soccer Mm -hmm. team sports team whatever Mm -hmm. just one person even if everyone else is fairly you know positive positive optimistic just one person could completely ruin the mood of the team you know it could be like if they're just like, oh, you know, this is so stupid or this is like so try hard. What like and I'm not saying he said any of this, right? I'm just yeah. saying that kind of feeling, even in professional in sports, whenever I played sports, like it is completely pervasive and it can really poison the team atmosphere. So your skill just doesn't make it worth it. Yeah. And we, we know that like there are lots of LCS players that are you know, kind of notorious for being like, like Double Lift is notorious for actually being that guy, right? For being yeah. that one. I mean, toxic he's made little... bad looking rosters win. So, you know, maybe yeah. he, maybe it works sometimes and it worked mm-hmm. like four times in a row, right? So, for years for Double Lift, for years and years it worked for him. You can't so. argue with that, but, you know, he that was that mean guy that though. People want to do it again, you know? No, yeah. Just... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I all, okay. Last thing I kind of want to mm. talk about it in this area is, um, um, Oh my god, I took a drink of water and I kind of forgot. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, well, normal transition here. Let's just talk about LCS, actually, because yeah, I forgot yeah, what yeah, I was going to Let say. me know. I mean, we're just <laughs> yeah. chatting. Yeah, true, true. Um, yeah, let's just talk about the games then. So we are talking about LCS Super Week. Uh, the teams who did not make it, so we'll say our short goodbyes. Uh, Immortals and Shopify Rebellion. Um now I didn't fully call it, but Shopify was almost last, right? Or they were second. They were seventh, right? Yeah, seventh place. Yep, so, seventh. you know, I almost I power ranked them eighth as much as I could, and I was almost right. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I mean, yeah, but they yeah. they did just like completely beat Cloud9 all the way up until the dumbest engage ever. So I yeah. mean. Yeah, still eighth. I mean, it was a competitive season. It was a competitive split, honestly. I thought the same Immortals really was not that bad. Immortals was kind of good, minus their jungler, right? Like, I actually um, I actually think you throw, like, if you put River on Immortals, I actually think it looks like it, it slingshots them to looking nearly like a top team. I'm not even joking. No, like, that's I how, no, I, that's I how bad our map was. <laughs> <laughs> like the fact that they were so close in so many games and it was with Armeo or Armao, whatever his name is, like it yeah. says a lot, man. I think you yeah. put River on there, even maybe Umpty if they can communicate. Like it's not that it's English bad, but like they gel. Yeah, no, they would be good enough. They just need someone who's par or above. And Armeo has been for his whole career at his peak, he's like just barely at par and usually he's below. Yeah. Right. No. Armeo has been bad. Average for a long time. I think one thing that you can say that Armao has is um, he has like, he has the ability to to have really good fundamentals, at least like for like, like the academy level. I don't know. Like he's the type of player who always smurfs in academy, right? He has a certain level of fundamentals that's too good for academy, not good enough for LCS. And then he just doesn't have that adaptivity, right? He doesn't have like the, okay, well, everything's all this shit's hitting the fan let's try something different no he just goes for the standard play what you're supposed to do i guess and i felt like it is good for a team who's like new and kind of like has a bunch of greenish rookieish players that he he can he can bring you all together on the same game plan right i do feel like there is like if this was same as eg last split right uh when eg armeo and jojo were on that team where Mm -hmm. i felt like it was very organized he was always in the right place at the right time but it only lasts so long because he he has a very low ceiling right i feel like his floor is pretty high as in his baseline fundamentals of being a jungler is is good enough for bottom tier lcs top tier academy but his ceiling is like right above his floor, right? He, he can only, he doesn't go very high. So it's like, he's a good jungler, I think for teams to grow out of. You play with him for a bit, he sucks. 
you but you got a lot of fundamentals for your other four players and now you get a better jungler maybe so you're Cap saying he's bengi <laughs> Uh, no, well that's so he, that's really the way weird he for Bengi. Jojo felt like Bengi Faker sometimes, except yeah, <laughs> much yeah. worse. Yeah, much uh, on the Bengi side. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bengi, you, you don't deserve that comparison, <laughs> not at all. Uh, one thing Armeo also misses, which you already hinted at, is he just does not only is he not adaptable, he doesn't have clutch factor. He yeah, no. he he does all. It looks like he actually does the reps. He knows like standard jungling pass. Like he's efficient enough, right? If he's playing against someone else who's just below his level and doesn't know how to play pro, he will always win. He's not, he doesn't have, well, pretty much always wins. He doesn't have that inconsistency. But yeah. when the pressure is on, like this guy is, has never clutched in a major, no. at least not that I remember, not on TSM. No. He did step not. in and get to game five against S Lick with the, that liquid waster, but like, not clutched. He's though. never clutched. Yeah. yeah. Like he was notorious that uh, series, actually, when he was Team Liquid versus Cloud9. Santorin had to step out. It was, this is when Perks was on C9. And, uh, for basically leaving Alfari on an island. Alfari got first blooded five games in a row, and you're like, yeah, okay, Alfari could play better, but where the hell is your jungler, right? <laughs> so, I, it's just, he, he has been an unadaptable player for almost eight years now? A long time. Like, Long, long There's time. No thoughts going on, man. Like, yeah. uh, bless his soul. He doesn't seem like a toxic guy. He seems like he works like to stay in the league. But that Alfari game, it was definitely both of their fault. It just they got both exposed. They they they're just the least flexible players in the goddamn league, and they were their top jungle. Yeah, and it's just like, hey, if you want to, you know, top laner is one thing, but jungler, you got to be adaptable. So that's enough about Immortals, though, right? Like, I think they their other four players did show some good stuff. It was. Yep. I want to see more of them, right? I'm especially impressed by their bot lane. Um, yep. uh, what is it? Uh, tactical, tactical and Olay. Olay the, <laughs> the Team Liquid rejects, essentially. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, they were um, just legit, dude. They were, they were at legit, least yeah. like fourth, fifth. If I just hey, had to rate this is them, a maybe higher. This is a compliment. I'm going to say they're a discount double of Cordu J, actually. It's a compliment. They're discount double of Cordu J. They, <laughs> oh, they were yeah. that good on a bad team. Two um, people taught by those players, right? Yep. Exactly. Well, actually, Ole was before Korja J, but you know, it felt like pretty pretty much right. Ole became good with double lift, like that's when he hit his highest highs. They won stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, let's talk about Shopify really quickly. Um, I don't have much to say except I do think B Boy is really really good. Um, he's the type of player where you could put him on another team and he would look insane. He might even look like the best ADC in the whole league. Uh, B Boy is cracked. But other than that, I hated his Kaisa build. God damn, he was useless. This is against he Cloud9. Anything. He couldn't do anything. You could tell he had insane mechanics. Oh my god, Berserker was griefing it. Berserker kept trying to hands diff B-Boy, and B-Boy kept outplaying him. But it didn't matter, because B-Boy had the most useless Kaisa build. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> yeah, it was like Aram. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is it, Aram? It, 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 just, Aram build it was like, a build that worked last season, right? When Static Shiv was overtuned. It just doesn't work yeah. anymore. It just doesn't work anymore. And also, I, I'm it was, convinced you know. that these players don't read. Like when that thing got nerfed, like it lost a lot. Like it's cheap, right? So it's a spike, but you cannot end game on that item. Yeah, no, he couldn't even mid game. He wasn't a champion pretty much the entire game. Like if you just went actually sold, normal I think ADC, he did sell it eventually. But like it's just a, was, it's not worth it. It was for Crypt Bloom. After almost fifty minutes in the game, it was like forty five minutes of the game. He sold it. Like imagine how much he could have been doing for forty minutes of the game if he was just a normal ADC. I think it would have been. Murder. I think Cloud9 would have lost that game for sure. It was for Crip Bloom against a team that was zero MR, literally zero MR Renekton, <laughs> Kindred, who did yeah. have Merc Treads, I guess. Yeah, that's it, yeah. And then it was Nico, Nami, Lucian. Like, there was no MR stacking at all. And he went Crip Bloom instead of damage. Like, hello? Just, is is this just, just a foreign concept? He just needed to go uh, ADC. That's it. He just needed to go attack damage honestly i don't even think I like think I... korean players on average have the worst builds of any region <laughs> they just copy they're like well ruler built it yeah and they, they, they don't think about the scenario i mean I, ruler I ruler was the guy building storm razor fucking ginsu's weird ass i don't even remember what it was he had the like weirdest low damage build last uh last year at worlds i remember he kept building it like it was like shiv storm razor like something really crappy and it did no damage, and he stopped building it halfway through Worlds because it did no damage. Uh, so my point, right? They're following Ruler, and Ruler's like, I don't know Ruler, what I'm doing. That, that was stupid as shit. Ruler might have the biggest hands, but he does not have the biggest brain. Okay, I'm, I'm only giving the like, 
I'm not even going to sugarcoat that. Like, yeah, his build was terrible. <laughs> All right, well, so long to Shopify as well. I think the rest of their team... I just... think Insanity is legit. I think he's worth having on a team, especially as a domestic mid laner. I think he has fine hands as Insanity, and he has an interesting champion pool, but... I can't comment on him being a good mid laner if he doesn't know how to play with his team. It felt like all everybody, all of them, mm. did not know how to play as a team, and that mm. is the mid laner's fault, That's at least true. to some extent, right? And I, I'm probably going to blame a lot on Zazel, honestly. I feel like that guy was lost. Like for for can, supposed to be one of their probably main shot callers and a legendary shot caller back in Cloud Nine way back in the day. This team did nothing. They did not engage. They did nothing in the mid game. They were a snooze fest. Um, so yeah, that's okay though. All right. That's done with them. No more talking about them ever again. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the teams that did make it. Uh, who do you want to talk about first? I'll let you mm. decide. I want to highlight that 100 Thieves, was it NRG or FlyQuest? I think it was NRG game. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, Shaco yeah, Vagar game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one I wanted to highlight. And so, I mean, it's also kind of a eulogy because uh, we didn't talk about it, but. Energy lost four games in a row, yo. Ooh, yeah, they did. <laughs> that was rough. Well, like, I guess not eulogy, eulogy, but like, dude, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I wanted to start with that. I think real quick, I have never seen a draft that was just like that. I think I think this is actually a narrative probably the co-streamers have to talk into because it's just so obvious. Like, hundred days went into that game and they knew their their exodia comp and they were like we don't care how stupid it is in this angle we just want to play it so i guess exodia is not the right um word to put it but they just found their tft build order and they're like okay well, <laughs> we're gonna be play vagar uh so this comp was all off top shake a last pick vagar uh whatever that new character is called smolder and then alistar like yep. that how does that comp get through mid game how did that come get through early game for that matter? Like this comp was dog. Uh, so I want to highlight that this comp, well, not dog. It, it just should never, it should be punished, right? Like there's no way a Korean team or Chinese team lets you through. And then I also wanted to point out that other than the Shaco giving first blood, um, Sniper played really goddamn well in this game. Yeah. Sniper was insane. His Olaf was like, I, I, his Olaf is basically what I think Whippo tries to do on Olaf. And sometimes he hmm. does do, but like I feel like Sniper actually knows how to play the edge. While Whippo seems to be like, I know how to cheese with this yeah. character. Yeah, yeah. I definitely I definitely felt like um Sniper uh, amongst all the craziness that was happening in the game, I mean Sniper was just the main character actually. Um like the other stuff kind of didn't matter because Sniper got so far ahead. I think if Sniper doesn't get far ahead and the Renekton is actually like exists, you know. Um, it is hard, I think, for for 100 Thieves to pull off this comp because your mid laner doesn't know damage <laughs> and your jungler is not a champion. So I think they got lucky that Sniper got so fed. Uh, to be fair, Energy kept camping him, right? And it just didn't work. He was just 1v2ing, 1v3ing them over and over again, um, like getting away or actually getting kills. Like he had the crazy highlight, right? Where he almost got a triple kill, 1v3. <laughs> yeah. And um, honestly, the rest of the stuff was just like kind of a plus, right? Like, this is also, okay, so we were talking about this before we started podcasting, but I'm going to talk about it now, is that Smolder is unfortunately, it has to be banned. Like, if you give away Smolder or you don't first pick it, I think you're trolling. You just lose uh... the game. Because they give over Smolder, and that's the only reason I think 100 Thieves is allowed to pick something stupid, right? Like, we're going to talk about it with Team Liquid later, where they pick the most early game, most generic, bruiser blah blah tank top side like renekton volley bear right but you have mm -hmm. smolder so it's fine all you need to do is get to 225 stacks on smolder and you win the game and i think that's just all 100 these realize is that like we can we got smolder we can pick whatever we want and we'll beat energy <laughs> that's pretty much what happened so um yeah it was, a, it was a really fun game though to watch for 100 thieves just because sniper popped off yeah <laughs> Absolutely. I think Smolder, my, my belief is that Smolder is one of those characters in scrims where people punish way harder. They go, they do the dives. And so Smolder probably just like is like 30 70 in scrims or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then in pro play, 10 wins, 4 losses, 71% win rate. Like it was just so disgusting. This character just continues to stack way too fast. It hits its full stacks at like level 12 or 13, which is too early for a spike. Like bare minimum, the level 16 spike Kale gets. Yeah, that's sure, fine. But Smaller doesn't even need items, guys. Like he just, well, he he needs his core, but his core isn't that like hard to achieve. 
Yeah, you know, his items are so janky. It's just like get as much CDR as possible with an Essence Reaver and Leandries. It's so janky. It's so janky. Like he builds Shojin Leandries rapid. It's so janky. I they need to change that about him. I think. <laughs> yeah. You can build literally almost anything in the game. You can even build tank items later on. Yeah. As long as you have a little bit AP or AD or crit or yeah, anything. Yeah. Yeah. He has a Shojin in it. Like, what the hell? Yeah, and the champion's allowed to go fleet footwork and stuff or sustain in lane, allowed to build AP with the fleet just to survive and scale and then do the highest damage in the game. I mean, this is on live patch, guys. This is where Smolder is nerfed heavily um multiple times in a row and it's just not even close to enough it doesn't it doesn't even phase him so they gotta they gotta take a look i think they just need to make him uh stack slower um that'll probably be the main way or i don't know because something i didn't realize for the longest time is that smolder the q i never played it right i never even looked at him but smolder's q is just a point and click it's just gangplank q but better and i'm like i cannot believe that this is how you give late game scaling damage to like a tr with a true damage execute to a champion in in 2024, Aurelian Soul at least has to like kind of hit a skill shot, right? She has he has to hit you with his little laser breath, but there's no skill with Smolder even. It, he has so high reward and no skill because his no Q skill. is point and click. I for the longest time thought his Q was a line skill shot until I played him for the first time. I was like, wait, this shit's point and click. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Uh, it doesn't yes. feel, and it's a point of click ability that gets extended by RFC. Yeah, uh, no. Mm -mm. I, I will say a mini take outside of, you know, Smolder going down the Cassante route of number of nerfs in a row, probably at the rate we're going. Um, I also think that Fleet Footwork is kind of a busted rune. Uh, 100%. Um, so many times, mm -hmm. like we, we've we been alluding to it, you know, Azir Pox Fleet Footwork with his Q now, or his uh, soldiers now. With so many times we've been alluding to other things being busted or too safe, but this friggin' rune on a pretty low cooldown too heals up to like 150, 180, depending on your AD or AP bonus later on, mm -hmm. just for autoing. Yep. And no, it's, it's like a good. six second, well, it's like a six to 10 second cooldown depending on your movement speed or if you have a dash. That's insane. That's actually absurd. You, some people just forego lifesteal because they don't need it. Yeah. And, and um, I mean, honestly, Fleet Footwork is been being abused for a long time like um uh who was it uh, i think timo has one of the highest win rates in top lane in high elo because he abuses fleet footwork so well he just moves crazy fast sustains pokes you you can never beat him like he has a very uh he's very strong which is weird because it's timo that, that, that uh, sentence just sounds cursed and also yes it also gives you movement speed yes you're absolutely yeah. right so it's just like complete aids to play against. <laughs> it also works with Cyclist Lord for some reason. So you can do Voltaic. You can do some weird builds with Old Shiv. Now it's not as good, but there's a lot of things you can abuse with it. It's very crazy. Yeah, and like Old LeBlanc was abusing it too. Yeah, it's I 100% agree with you. That nerf, that rune needs to be nerfed. Uh, Fleet is too good, especially since they nerfed the damage of all the other runes too, right? I remember that. Uh, that was like midway through last year all right well that's that's 100 thieves a little bit of, a little bit of ranting about fleet footwork and smolder let's talk about another interesting game uh just because i predicted it correctly and this guy to my right here did not predict it correctly the team liquid fan tl versus FlyQuest. what a giga stomp okay once again i'm gonna say it they want because of smolder like let's just be real guys they want because of smolder um why is my th do you hear that can you hear me I can hear you fine. Oh, okay. Sorry, my headset was like disconnecting, and reconnecting over here. That was weird. Mm, okay. Anyways, uh, Team Liquid completely smashed FlyQuest. It wasn't even close. Um, to be fair, I I do think it was the Smolder had a big part of it. Oh, I agree. Uh, Absolutely. Also, Jensen on Karma. I don't think he's won yet, or he's never looked good on it. So I think that's a big deal. <laughs> Jensen cannot play Karma like to save his life. Um, but any any thoughts on this game? Any thoughts on just yeah, yeah I, I absolutely agree that the Smolder is a big deal. We mentioned this before when we were just discussing the games, as we do. Um, the Renekton top with Volibear jungle, where they can just have Pryo, where they can have a lot of power. Whipple couldn't do shit on Jace. He was 1-5-1 and one at the end of the game. Uh, Smolder's incredibly broken. Jan actually is pretty good on Smolder. It's like, I guess, not... It's a caster AD. Like, Jan actually has a good amount of diversity. He can pick... Um, like Seraphine and B actually better than Double If and stuff like that. Not really a high bar, but like he plays a lot of characters in bot lane. That's all I'm saying, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So while I don't think he's it when it comes to like 
being your clutch high power AD carry, uh, he he was very serviceable, right? But honestly, I think the character is brain dead. I think Jan also is like you can tell that he does put in reps on like practice tool or whatever to like maximize farm. Like he hit those stacks too early. It was disgusting. Yeah, I was disgusted was. as a fan. Um, last thing they they picked a hyper carry mid for APA, and I mean. He wasn't super giga like carrying or anything, but he, you know, he got some roams off and he did get there on a soul. So he had free lane, not a bad champion. Let's be it real. Free he had lane because of how much free lane. Yeah. <laughs> Cause of I how freaking useless Jensen is. <laughs> Jen, I mean, Jensen, I feel like, and this is someone who, you know, is a liquid fan supports Jensen, but like, I think Jensen is like in his career, he's seen Bjergsen like get his pentakill on Karma in season four, or was it? He's, like, he's like, oh, dude, Bjergsen's like famous for his Karma, his Zillion. Well, okay, so is Jensen. But he's like, I want to play Karma too. And he has never, mm. no matter how busted Karma is, he has never made it look anything but like serviceable. Like, like, like baseline, like he knows what the buttons do because it's Karma, guys. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, he's no. not a Karma player. He doesn't understand which mantra to choose. He, doesn't, he just looks lost. His laning's not even dominant. Like, why is APA allowed to get away with it? Well, I mean, okay, he was getting ganked, but like he wasn't really getting real pressure. Like, it wasn't putting him down a lot. Yeah. I mean, I also think in general, FlyQuest's draft was pretty bad. Uh, uh, Jace, I don't think is it right now. I, I just don't think he has a good build. I don't know if the champion is actually bad, but once you have to start actually building items, <laughs> then it gets bad. <laughs> I don't think I agree. I don't think the champ's numbers are bad, but his items are kind of feels bad. Yeah, he had to build Sunderer <laughs> Eclipse, and I'm like, that's just not a Jace. Like old Eclipse, great on Jace, right? Because he got yeah. he had armor pen and percent and lethality and all that stuff, but. I just feel like if you're going to play Jace, there has to be a different build you go. It can't be whatever the hell this is, right? Because I've, I've seen other Jaces, I think, elsewhere. And they were also building Eclipse and stuff. I'm like, it just doesn't seem good, man. There's just no lethality on it. I feel like if you're playing Jace, you need to build lethality. Like, where's the Murrah mana at least, right? Like, they're playing it with Conquer, like a weird-ass bruiser. I just don't think that's how you play Jace. I it think does, you play it just Jace. Looks so forced, man. Yeah, you get a big damage. Mura mana with lethality. That's what they need to do. Um, so yeah. Um, all right. Let's. Uh, any other games we want to highlight? Um, I think we talked yeah. a lot about the most memorable games this weekend, right? We talked about Hundred Thieves Energy, C9 versus Shopify. We talked about Team Liquid versus FlyQuest. Um, we can just kind of just talk about how our feelings around the teams. Um, just to keep sure. the flow going, let's just talk about FlyQuest. They ended uh, first in the regular season. I think it's because they have a tiebreaker against 100 Thieves, if I'm yeah, not mistaken, that they actually they... get... Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. I actually don't remember. Uh, but they're first place, same record as 100 Thieves, but they're sitting technically number one. Uh, and they're going to play Team Liquid next weekend. What are your overall thoughts on FlyQuest regular season? And yeah, just uh, give me a brief summary of our number one yeah, team. Yeah, I think this is a team that, you know, sometimes we like to overhype our teams. You know, we get the cooldown from Worlds or MSI or whatever. And we're like, you know, I think we have a chance. I don't think this team currently in its current form has enough firepower to go international and mm. like do damage like with the EG rosters of your or even like the C9 rosters. So like even though C9 currently is, we'll get to them, I I. <laughs> I don't necessarily know if FlyQuest is much more of a bet, right? So I, I I think the issue with them is like they just kind of they kind of feel like they're on their way to getting exposed. If the season was four more games like they used to be, I feel like they're very close to getting like red. But you know, if they find out like if they are more stubborn about what Jensen picks, like I could still see them being like a very strong top two finish, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I don't know. They don't have that championship spirit. Uh, weight to them that they had at the beginning of the split yeah i'm honestly like i feel like maso masu and buzio have been good have been really solid but i'm still waiting for that feeling that i think you're looking for too where it's like oh they're good or like oh they're popping off like i haven't actually gotten that from masu and bco i've gotten moments of like that was pretty cool or like hey you guys are pretty consistent or you guys have a wide champion pool but it hasn't been that crazy like oh this is actually going to bring you guys to the number one in the entire league right and maybe have you guys do damage internationally because i do feel it from jensen and inspired i feel like these guys are pretty clutch players um they have you know they do have some insane performances Whippo is not consistent enough for me to believe in them either like i don't 
I don't like Blippo is obviously one of the better top laners in the league, right? He's maybe yep. even the best, but I don't have that. Like even when he was on Fnatic, I felt like he had a different vibe on Fnatic where I was like, this is a guy I can trust. This is a guy that's clutch. This is a guy that has insane playmaking. I don't feel it this split. I don't feel it from him. I even felt it more when he was on Team Liquid. In Spring Split Team Liquid, I felt like that Whippo was very clutch. This Whippo is just not as high highs, honestly. Not as flashy Can and... Can discuss Whippo on that Team Liquid that you just mentioned? As like, yeah. if Whippo can like hard carry on his like GP or something, we'll win. And yeah. Like, he yeah. used to be a, a major win condition. Yeah. 100%. Um, so, yeah, but still, FlyQuest, I mean, congrats, right, to making yeah. it to first place. Um, this org has been trying to do it for a long time, and, you know, they 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 had a little dip in summer last year, but they had two top-tier teams now, completely different players. So they're able to put together a, a roster and do well, at least for a, a long extended period. Will they win mm-hmm. a title, though? To be determined. To be determined. Um, okay, let's, let's talk about our next uh, top team, 100 Thieves. We kind of already talked about them, but uh, I'll just briefly give them praise in that this is four rookies, basically, right? And and River, right? It, it's not literally four rookies because Ayla, you know, is not a rookie, but um, yeah, this team's freaking cool. This team's really good. This team's really spicy. This team, right? Like, Quid is, oh my goodness, Wow, did we get him wrong last year? I was not a believer at all of him last year. He turned it around 110%. Congratulations. Like that's that's really special for Quid, I think. Yeah. I uh, a thousand percent agree. Quid has been up and up. River is still top tier as we all knew. Sniper is, yeah. you know, looks kind of lost at times, but his ups are really good actually. Like yeah, again, are. I am definitely coloring that Olaf game as extra weight. But you can tell, like, there is upside to this team. Unlike the conversation I had about FlyQuest. And, okay, they went 3-0 this weekend, too, which is a big, you know, that. But going 3-0 on a Super Week is hard to do. And, and the last they week did it. matters, yeah. Yeah, the last week. It's, 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 under pressure, they actually did well. I mean, sure, they had to be Shopify and more. It's the bottom two teams, right? But, like, these teams have taken off team games off the top teams all the time or made it really close. So they stopped them, man. And the game against NRG, yeah, it was actually a very important game. For, and they were just like, yeah, we're going to pick what we know. This game matters. This is for first place of a team with four rookies, right? Going in with the or second place, I guess, but like a potential for first place. Uh, and they just like, completely smurfed. They like, yeah, they did. well, Sniper completely snurf. I I think Quid building <laughs> Roa Shirelius, man. I, 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 you're cooking. <laughs> Dead man's like it was an Abraham. Hell build, man. yeah. Good ass the, build. Build it in your soul cube, everybody. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody build it, please. It was so funny. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I like this team. I want to cheer for Quid. I want to cheer for River. I want to cheer for Sniper. Like, I don't know Meech well, but he's been playing fine. And Ayla has, you know, gotten a pretty bad first couple of seasons even though he's a rookie he's like not really a rookie he's had he's just never had a good roster really except that he's, um the yeah, super never, team i guess technically he's never been a consistent member of a roster right he's always been subbed in and out or came into like like the longest single split that he actually stayed on one team was eg and that was already a dumpster fire right um, that was a disaster so I, I i feel like it's it's nice for um ayla to finally just be on a consistent normal steady situation for him because he's performing mm-hmm. well enough where it's like yeah this is worth it this is worth all of the drama all of the back and forth the jumping between teams and rosters and stuff to uh to make it here so good mm-hmm. for ayla good for this hundred these team and i i gotta be honest like we're gonna have to bring up the mvp question because mvp for lcs mm-hmm. is regular season right so we can talk about what we think lcs would be and mm-hmm. then you know we kind of usually like to think of uh, our MVPs like holistically, but we can think about our LCS regular season MVPs that we think LCS might do. And for me, I don't know, Quid and River are pretty up there for yeah. members on that list, right? I mean, mm-hmm. other people are from FlyQuest, like Inspired, uh, Jensen maybe, but like freaking <laughs> JoJo, right? We haven't talked about Cloud9 yet that much, but like Quid mm-hmm. and River are up there. All right, so let's let's do it. Let's talk about Cloud9 finally. Um, yeah, sitting at a nice, pretty third place. Probably not what they were looking for, uh, but here they are. Uh, what do we think about Cloud9 <laughs> in their last week? <laughs> Brother, this last week stinked. It was so <laughs> yeah. bad, man. Like, yeah. they went 2-1, and one, but it was... <laughs> 
<laughs> they lost to the last place team in Immortals. They did stomp Dignitas, which is, you know, good for them. That's actually cool. not bad. Yeah. And then they played a 52 minute banger into Shopify, where Shopify was playing the banger and they just kind of came, they just, JoJo did this God engage at inside their base four or is it five man like Nico all. And yeah. I was like, dude, JoJo, if you weren't clutch there, this team would have been getting clowned on. Like actually though, because they were just so bad this week. Yeah. Um, they did they their last five games out of four and one, and we I mentioned last week like they beat Liquid, right? Also a kind of a throwy game back and forth. Yeah. And then they did stop five questers. I was like, okay, maybe they're back. Maybe they figured out their meta. Uh, I I think JoJo is the only person who is not like guaranteed fraud status on this team. The other ones, I'm not saying they're guaranteed, but like there there's like a conversation to be had about almost everyone whether it's the builds from berserker or his positioning or like his ego like what is he doing there's so many times where i'm like wholly unimpressed yeah. um so yeah i said a lot but i think this team like <laughs> they they're four and one and i'm flaming them more than i flame most teams who are like two and three or three and two yeah the hat guys like this is a super team they barely got third yeah. it's like a super team and well, this is a super team in a year that most people downgraded a lot not just like yeah. a super team like the fly quest here with prince and um uh vikla yeah uh yeah hard to not agree with that uh they suck um they <laughs> they <laughs> they looked really bad in a lot oh, of their wins God. i think my biggest disappointment okay so expectations is a huge thing to to talk about with c9 right they, they, they have to have expectations. They're literally one of the best orgs to ever exist in esports, right? And yes. for LCS, they are, at this point, right, probably the best org. Um, Team Liquid hasn't won in a while. If they if Team Liquid had won any year, you, they would be in conversation. But it has to be Cloud9, right? They have to be the best org right yes. now. Um, and yeah, man, they have some of the best players, and they, they look bad. They look really bad. Like, Berserker went from being god status all of last year, all of the last two years, whatever, to this year being the guy that's like, okay, I can tell you have really high APM. You clearly can like play Earth like crazy, but you have no brain. <laughs> you have no fucking brain, dude. Oh, like, Omi really you know, said played Earth like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He has really fast hands. Good for him. Good for Berserker, okay? He's Korean. But holy cow, did he throw... That, that Shopify game over and over again just by killing himself. He was just dashing in and killing himself and flashing forward and like getting outplayed. I'm like, brother, come on, Berserker. This is not what he used to be. Berserker used to play the knife's edge perfectly, like mm -hmm. like like a master class, and he has regressed immensely from that era. It's a high bar, okay? Let's be real. Berserker being maybe the best player in LCS for the last two years, last year and a half or whatever it was, to being like this, it's a huge drop down. And Berserker's still good, but nowhere close to the best player in the LCS right now. And it is sad to have to say that. Um, but hey, maybe they turn around in playoffs. You know, I, I'm not going to write him off because of one regular season. But JoJo, JoJo is him, okay? I like. I was making fun of Nico. Like I think in the last two episodes where <laughs> yeah, Nico yeah. is not that hard to play. Okay, Nico, yeah, it's not that hard to get a big four man, five man ulti, blah blah blah. You jump, you flash in, you proto belt. Okay, it's different for JoJo, okay? He found the angles that were very unexpected. They found him when he was one HP. He found them when he was getting jumped on and collapsed on and in a kindred ulti. I felt like JoJo made some of the most clutch Nico ultis that like that was even possible, honestly. In those situations, on, on those slim margins with CC raining down on him, Kindred ultis, bombs on his head, like he made very slim uh, clutch engages. So congrats to him, right? He feels like he's he's kind of, I don't know if he's peaking, but he seems like he's just as good as ever, right? Um, so that's good for him. But everybody else, very disappointed. Very, very disappointed in the... I'm disappointed in Blabber, man. I am too. That guy's so useless. I feel like that guy doesn't do anything right. I mean, it's not like he doesn't do anything right, but he went from being like clutch mastermind to, I don't know, man. He's whatever yeah. we were looking at. And it's know. crazy because we gave yeah. him so much slack for so long because his mid laners have been like, who was he? Who was he? even his name anymore? I don't remember the Korean dude who's super toxic. Eminez. 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 <laughs> Eminez and um, 
not peak Jensen, right? And so Diplex. I'm like, okay, I get it. Yeah, As yeah. a jungler, like that's so hard if your mid laner is like inconsistent, right? Yeah. So, and he was playing well then. So the fact that he has the guy we're literally saying is him on his team and he can't make it work uh, yeah, it looks, consistently it looks like a bummer, is very yeah. disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, we get, we'll talk, we're talking about Berserker and Blabber because we expect more. Vulcan and Fudge, I kind of lost hope on them. I don't know. They're just like, I've kind of given up on them. There's not even. That didn't even cross my mind. I'm like, who? <laughs> yeah. Fudge and Vulcan, <laughs> I kind of don't even want to waste breath on them because, like, they just look bad, honestly. I don't know. Yeah. Like, nothing new to say about them. That's all I want to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they need to pick it up a bit. Um, all right. Let's see. Anyone else who we should talk about? Okay. Team, look, I guess they got fourth place. Haha. <laughs> Good joke. Okay. Let's move on. So is it Dignitas? No, I'm kidding. Okay. We can talk about Team Liquid. <laughs> um, they got fourth place. Place. They had, I don't know, a weird weekend, I guess. Uh, their most interesting thing about them was the double of drama, let's be real. Uh, but what do you want to say about Team Liquid? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I already mentioned it earlier, but they found their formula. Their formula is a really strong prior top side, a hyper carry mid, and a smolder bot. If they can get a smolder bot or just a carry bot, like a hyper carry bot, which is usually smolder, then you don't, where do you choose to focus, right? Because if you focus APA like they did in game three, three of super week where yeah. they they just like dude they just keep ganking his zigs and i was like eh, yeah but team liquid looks like they're ready for it they're like it was part of the game plan <laughs> apa yeah. dies or burns flash here and then we'll rotate and you know gank some other lane and it worked <laughs> it, it, they did not give two shits what happened to apa it literally was like yeah apa is literally it, was, it almost felt like a <laughs> it was back on the time when <laughs> pure was on the team and they couldn't yeah. speak to him oh <laughs> god English. i was uh... like yeah <laughs> just a different game playing six and you know yep. having a good time um last thing i'll say is other than i think impact is in the top four or top three conversation for mvp i don't think he's the mvp but he deserves a definitely an honorable mention and maybe second yeah. team all pro for a top yeah. maybe yeah, first it uh, depends on where you rate the others uh and umpty's hilarious still every time this guy interviews i'm like why is the guy with the most personality in this goddamn league the guy who's only been in the U.S. for like four months or five months. Like, <laughs> yeah, on? it's true. Like his it's English is true. good, so it doesn't really matter that he's only been in the U.S. But like, there should be a culture shock, right? But he's yeah. here and he's like bringing more entertainment than like most of the people who've been paid their whole lives to do this. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <sighs> it's a bit of a bore. Okay, there's a lot of interesting, I think, stuff going on in LCS, but the personalities are not it, unfortunately. Right? Like OMT is one. I think Sniper is kind of an interesting personality, but since C9 is losing, right, we don't hear a lot from JoJo that much either. Like, it's kind of qualms. It's kind of a qualms split, you know, not not as much drama. I really enjoyed the Sven Yeon drama last year. That was fun. But like, it's the Vulcan kind of meh. Ayla drama. <laughs> sure, yeah, that was good too, right? But this one's kind of meh this year so far. So we need more personality. I think they were talking about this on the co stream too, where it's like, you know, I, okay, so. They were reminiscing on the co stream of like a lot of players that should be in the league that are still good that aren't in the league, right? Like Licorice, like Spica, like Stixay, even, right? And then it just brought me back. And I remembered, God, I remember when Stixay was new, you would just see on Reddit a new clip of him every week doing something stupid or ridiculous and solo queue, right? There was that clip where Stixay is playing Flex with all of CLG, Aphromoo's hyping him up, and he gets a pentakill on Ezreal. Right? Like, I remember that because yeah, I remember. Darshan and Aphromo and 6A have so much personality. They're screaming to the mics. They're hilarious. I remember 6A doing the stupid, like, Callista thing where he stacks a bunch of spears on Gromp and kills somebody. That went right to the front page of Reddit. Like, maybe it's Reddit too, but, like, these plays that, like, have so much personality that everybody remembers from Solo Queue that gets blasted on Reddit and social media, like, they don't happen anymore. You know? Like,. I missed the time where I would open up Reddit and it was an LCS pro player doing something hilarious and stupid with other of his friends and it being on sub the subreddit and it being talked about for the next couple of weeks and remembered. That's what we're missing, right? We're missing that connectivity. Um, like, man, like Aphromu was not great at the end of his career, but he had personality for so long. Doublelift, Medio, Sneaky, like these guys all were always showing up and doing something funny. Um... You know, even players like Stixay, right? Uh, and Spica, too. And yeah, we miss that. We need that, right? Like, I want to see Sniper pop off in pro play. And then I want to see a clip of him playing solo queue on a stream and him doing something hilarious, right? Like, I need I need it all. We need it all. 
for us to yep, live again. That was the again. endless content loop that made it so exciting to follow these people. You would see them off stream, like, oh, drama happened, or the, oh, they completely smurfed on them. And then yeah. you would take that conversation and like, okay, right, in LCS, I wonder who's going to win this matchup, right, when it happens. There's always that hype building. I will say, good good that you brought up Aphromu. A lot of people don't know, this guy was like a 10K plus streamer, uh, an 80 carry mate before he switched to support. Like, he was still a pro, but he streamed and he had one of the biggest uh, Twitch streams out there. Or yeah, was he was Justin huge. At the time, his Twitch. Yeah. Um, he was huge. And I will also say that while we do need more people like Afro who have great personalities, he was on the broadcast and honestly, that cast was a little bit... He was not... No, he's a little He's not a caster. Now. He's a yeah, little... Well, he, he's a little too he's... subdued. I think he lost his passion for the game years ago. <laughs> We're being real, absolutely. you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it doesn't. That doesn't rewrite history. He had one of the best personalities in terms of not toxic, too toxic at least as far as pros go. He was pretty normal, pretty acceptable, and super entertaining. He wasn't yeah. toxic, funny. He was just funny. And yeah, energetic. yeah, no, yeah. On like on stream, on like if you're, when he's like talking to the viewers, he was never like the toxic kind of like you yeah. know. A little bit of double, a little bit of Tyler one. They they can be toxic while they're playing, right? Um, uh -huh. Yeah. So yeah, we miss that. Like I even like thinking back to like Dardock, right? Dardock like running around just being a toxic little like like gremlin child <laughs> jumping so from funny. team to team. It was entertaining. It made the league scene interesting, right? It helped. It made a big difference. You know what is our version? Our version of Dardock is our Mal. And I don't hear shit about Armao, right? He just no, we just watch him play no, bad, no, and we hear nothing from him. Be. He doesn't don't talk shit on that. Twitter. He's not showing up on stream saying something hilarious. There's no there's no breaking point video about Armao. It's just he's just bad, and he just hops from team to team being bad. And I I <laughs> wish at least we heard from Armao. I want to hear why he switched his name. I want to hear him in interviews. I want to hear him stream and talk talk shit about like. There's just so much personality lacking from LCS these days. It's just true. Uh, how did we even get to this tangent? What were we even talking about? Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about Team Liquid. Oh, Umpty. Umpty is the uh, most entertaining yes. player, um, and he just joined, and his like his English is really good, actually. But he just yeah. shouldn't know our culture. He shouldn't be the one who has to hard carry the interviews. And I know the others on the co-streams and when they're like co-casting for the, uh, the LCS, pretty good, actually, on average. Um, I think even though media has a lot of issues, he's very funny still on the dive. Like he's not a bad addition um, no, compared to when good. Mark C was there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so like he's good. I'm not saying Mark C is bad. I'm just saying that he actually fills in the space well. And I just we we need more. Like we can't yeah, just we can't just more. carry this right. Like he he can say things like I I want to kill River, and then the <laughs> chat will be like in the game, right? Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't really doesn't clarify at all. But we gotta have more than See, that, guys. This it should be part funny. of your job to yeah. like actually participate, make content, and make your league more interesting. I yeah, can't believe I mean, it's not. I wouldn't even care how good LCS is. It's not like we're winning worlds, right? Just make people funny. You know, I want to see some goofy ass plays like. 100 Thieves is funny because they have Sniper, like, 1v3 people in a game with Shaco and Vagar. If you're not going to be funny in an interview, at least be funny in game, right? And is that too much to ask for, guys? Is that too much to ask for? Just be funny somewhere. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's talk about funny. I'm just going to gloss over Dignitas. They're a solid team, honestly. Nothing really to complain about. I'm glad that they're in playoffs because this is usually a bottom feeder team. And I thought they were pretty decent for most of the split. They are actually kind of good. Um, but surprisingly decent and surprisingly stable for a Dignitas roster. It was weird. Yeah. It was, yeah you know, I, I'm, I'm not disappointed that they're in playoffs. I'm actually excited to see what they'll do. I don't think they're going to win anything. They're not going to go that far, but I'm glad they're there. Uh, let's go right to energy though. Um, holy cow, zero and four, baby. Best super week ever. Like they literally lost more games than they were scheduled for. Um, how do you feel about energy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, did it make a zero and four? Three actually, they must have won one game right last week. No, uh, no zero and four uh, because they lost the tiebreaker. Because uh, the oh, because the tie okay, no, no, yeah, you're yeah. right, the tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, um, yeah. So energy, we said last week. I definitely said at least, and I think I initiated this conversation where I said, yeah, when they get closer, I think they're actually on the way um, to like being ready for playoffs for them, right? The regular season, they were trolling, whatever, but like they're more stable than they were. At this point last year, then they completely just entered this, uh, entered the last week, super week, 
and yeah so one they lost right so that's not good whatever but like their their run wasn't like that easy there was still fly quest 100 thieves on their schedule so mm -hmm. i only expected them to maybe win one of that if they were turning it on mm -hmm. but uh, maybe the more fundamental issue is like the hell are they doing like what they, they, their read on the meta was so weird it felt like their picks were weird the coordination was a little it, it wasn't necessarily off right because i think energy does still have the power of friendship per se but it did feel like there was brain lag it felt like they were playing <laughs> slower than they should they feel like there are times that it's just you know like Dokla would get caught out and nobody no one was doing anything um yeah. there was no superstar this whole run no, nobody stepped up usually the old nrg was inconsistent because like someone would step up and then you know the others would kind of flounder and you're like okay whatever it's kind of yeah. fun to watch no I, I felt like this whole week everyone was just on autopilot maybe they thought they were auto qualified it doesn't matter but like being at the bottom two seeds in playoffs when there's only eight teams and it's you're in the top six is pretty bad it was really is bad not? yeah so they barely didn't make it I, right yeah it's and it hurts their playoff seeding it hurts their bracket luck uh well, they're just a loser bracket, period. Yeah. So they, it's obviously bad. And they all they had to do was win, like, twice out of, yeah. I guess, four games. But twice they would have been fine. I mean, twice just in the past couple of weeks. So they've been dropping the, their games to both top teams and bottom teams, right? They're not even inconsistent in the way we liked it back then. Uh, they're just inconsistent, as in they just suck most of the time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I will say they're going to win the split, I guess, because <laughs> they had a maybe, They are shit the <laughs> most massive. They are very good at being underdogs. That's that's a skill that they're very good at having. Uh... The only way to get that skill is to be shit, though, right? So, yeah, they are underdogs. Um, one. <laughs> I think honestly, this is probably Palafox's worst split. Maybe besides one of his first splits ever in the league, like way back in the day on CLG. But this is, I think, one of his worst mm. splits I've ever seen. Palafox had some really, really stinker games this split, uh, especially the Ari game. Like, Jesus Christ, could he not land a charm on people who are basically not moving sometimes. Like, it was bad. Um, I also think Palafox is just not clutch, right? We were talking about some players being clutch back in the day, and they just don't have it anymore. Like, for some reason, it felt like he lost that. Contracts, mm. I think, is still fine-ish. He, he doesn't have that mm. same intiness that... When Contrax is on a bad team, he ints his brains off. He's not doing that, so he's grown past that. But mm -hmm. it just doesn't seem like he has much to work with. It doesn't seem like he's doing much. Um, Dokla, honestly, kind of looks the same. He just kind of looks like he's a guy who just kind of put it together. <laughs> like, he, he's struggling to put it together. Um, and so I, he looks bad, but the same kind of bad. So nothing to there. Now, the bot lane is where I'm going to actually focus on. I actually think uh -huh. who he is holding FBI back. I actually think FBI, minus a couple plays here and there, has been having a pretty good split. He's actually been pretty decent for the most part. Not playing amazing, but being like the guy that's like, hey, they lost the game, and it's not really because he made any big mistake. It's because everything fell apart around him, and he was just useless because he's an ADC on the team that's behind. Who he isn't obviously clearly looking playing bad. I'm suspecting... There has to be something that who he is bringing to the table that is not gelling with everybody else because mm. I it's just I feel like Ignar would just fit the team better for some reason. I think everybody expected who he to fit this team really well, but for some reason I think it's got to be Ignar is a bit better uh, for this team. I'm not saying better as a player necessarily, which but it might be the case. Ignar brought something that is like who he. As more I learn about him, I think he's less of like a, hey, let's all jump on the same team on the same bag line and let's go, right? Ignar is that guy. Hey, we got this idea. We're all on the same team. Let's just go. Let's. I, I'm down. I'm down to clown. Whatever idea we all come up with, fuck it. Power of friendship. I actually don't think who he is fully like that. Who he's kind of like that, but who he is definitely more of the like, yeah, that's a pretty good idea, but I actually have an idea about this though. But I actually think maybe we should do it this way. You know, I feel like who he's a bit more of like. I think we should do it this way. Oh, you guys all think we should do it that way? Well, but 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 maybe we should do it. You know what I mean? Like he he is he can jump on the bad wagon, but he does kind of want to do his own thing. Like he wants to play this weird ass Wukong support with Senna. Like that was just terrible. Not gonna lie, bro. Um, so we'll see how energy does. Uh, we've been going on for an hour now, so let's actually just pick up the pace and let's just do predictions for next week. Uh, next week's games. Okay. So okay, we got fly quests. Number one seed versus Team Liquid, the fourth seed in the first round 
of the upper bracket semifinals. Who are you taking it? Give me your games and why. And if you say Team Liquid, mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna either not be yeah, surprised I'm, and I'm laugh gonna... or be surprised. I don't even know how I'm gonna feel if you say Team Liquid. <laughs> mixed feelings. Uh, yeah, I mean I'm gonna say Team Liquid, obviously. Uh, wow. I, I I already prefaced it with all the things I said before. It looks like FlyQuest is slowly getting figured out, and it looks like Liquid has actually found a couple formulas that work for them because you can't just ban out Ziggs, right? Like you could, but there are a lot of bans you have to do. And if Smolder's not on your hit list, like that's already a problem. Smolder Ziggs are off the list. You get jungle prior, you get your top prior, like you get exactly what you want to make impact a pain in the ass. And then they've basically proven that APA will die and they don't care anymore. And that means they can pick ASOL and like, okay, gank him, do whatever. And he'll still like, ASOL is in the comps they're playing, ASOL can still cover what they needed to do, right? Um, which is do a dumb roam, not a dumb roam, a roam that sacrifices a wave to get another lane ahead, and then we'll go from there. And you can just AFK and die twice. We don't care. It's literally they're budgeting for this now. Um, so to me, Liquid has found their strategy at the right time. It'll still be a three two. I, I, I mean, like they're not clean, they're not mm. consistent. And if they do come in and literally cynically ban Smolder five games in a row, like yeah, I mean, Black Quest might come out ahead. But we you have seen. Time and time again, especially if it's a team with players like Whippo on it, team like with players with Jensen on it, they'll be like, we have a counter pick. We don't need a Ben Ziggs. I can destroy APA Ziggs with my karma. And like, I don't wow. have a lot of faith that they're that going to yeah. respect APA. I think one of APA's strengths, even though he <laughs> is a weakness, I think one of his strengths is he's the kind of player you'd feel it's like a hurt to your pride to ban out. <laughs> you don't want to respect APA. That's how. No, it's that's true. His, that's there his secret power. Like it's the same logic that Yumi was allowed to be as strong as she was for so long in pros when pick her because it hurts a pro mm. player's pride. I think mm. that he's the Yumi of mid laners. Like I'm gonna ban that. I don't think he's good, and mm. so they're gonna let him through. And even if they ban one, they're not gonna triple ban. <laughs> right? They're not gonna double ban. So as long as he doesn't go a zero five games in a row, I think we have a tight win. All right. Well, you know, I respect I respect the commitment. I actually respect the points too, because you are right. Right. I feel like energy gets this as well. Where it's like it's just energy. We can just give them Senna TK. It's fine. Oh shit, we got two owed, guys. We're G two and we got two owed by NA team. Like it just happens. You know, you give Senna TK twice in a row and your game's your series is over. So I mean, I I see what you're going with, but I think it's so. If you are just a normal, just League of Legends viewer like myself, and I look at Team Liquid, I will just ban Asol, Ziggs, Smolder every game. And honestly, Team Liquid has not won without those champions. Maybe they have here and there, but in the recent memory, they just haven't won unless they're on one of those three champions. I would just do that <laughs> just to start the series off. If I'm FlyQuest, you'd be like, what happens if we just ban those three? See what you guys do. Okay, I, because, like, you know, what are you going to give U Impact? You're going to give them Udyr, Renekton? Kasante, they don't win with those regularly. Who are you going to give uh, Umpty? He already has Volley Bear. Who are you going to give him Vi? I mean, you have Volley Bear in the, in the meta uh, for support, right? Nothing that Cordy J has done has interested me at all. Have him, is Tom Kent just so whatever? His Nautilus is so whatever. I, it just doesn't seem that big of a deal uh, as long as you ban Smolder, Ziggs, and Aurelian Soul, right? I, I don't think they'll be able to do much. Maybe he'll APA will pull out the Nico, and that could be interesting, um, but... I'm actually going to go FlyQuest. I think I'm going to go 3 0. Yeah, I'm sorry, okay. buddy. I think I'm going uh, 3 0. Thank it's you. It's going to be thank rough. You. We're going to welcome. Thanks to your blessing. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. I you generally. Took one for the team. <laughs> I took one for the team. Maybe it's a 3 1. I could honestly see the only way it's a 3 1 is if FlyQuest intentionally gives over one of these picks to experiment. They give over Smolder or they give over Ziggs just to experiment. Team Liquid's Otherwise... 4 1 on Udir. I'm not like that worried about. Yeah, but who are their picks. teammates? I'm pretty sure when when it was with like Ziggs and shit and like Smolder, like that's my point. Like the Udyr wasn't that relevant. I mean, it was still mm -hmm. good, still strong, but it was because mostly of the Ziggs, right? That APA is actually good on. Um, but maybe I don't know. It could be wrong. There could be a couple of good Udyr games that had nothing to do with the other picks. But it's Udyr. Who cares, right? Not not a crazy menace in the top lane right now. Um, so mm -hmm. just a little neg negative 
activity to fuel Team Liquid's eventual victory for Kevin, right? That's that's it's for you, buddy. Sacrificing for me. I'm yep, down no for problem. It. Every time we look down on Team Liquid from your side, my chances of going winning just double. Hey, I'm agree, just saying it goes to zero. Last time I predicted Team Liquid to win, they just did too. So you know, as long as we disagree, I guess. As long as we disagree, I guess. Yeah. All right, let's go to Hundred Thieves oh. Cloud Nine. This one's gonna be a banger. I just know it. There's no way a Hundred Thieves series. There's no way this roster of 100 Thieves is ever not a banger. I could see FlyQuest versus Team Liquid being a non-banger because both teams can be very heavy on the macro sometimes. But 100 mm -hmm. Thieves is always going to be a banger this split. So I'm excited for this one the most. Who do you think is going to win? Who do you think is going to take it? How many games? 100 Thieves, 3-1. Cloud9 does not have an idea of how to play right now as a team. You saw them basically on by the skin of their teeth, barely avoid going to like I think it was tiebreakers actually, mm -hmm. and they were not playing well at all. And they had mm -hmm. time; they had a two week break to do everything they needed to grind out. They have a bunch of DJ and super late game champs, and they pick Lucianami over and over. These people are, what are they doing? Um, Jojo Pion is good, but like Quid is the second best, no? Right now in, yeah. the, in the league. So, like, yeah. is that your biggest strength is there? Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, I think if Sniper completely bashes Fudge's head in, I will be a very happy camper. <laughs> in, in the game, in the game, of course. In game, sure, buddy, sure. I'm going to kill River in game, sure. Yeah, wink, wink. Well, here's what I'll have to say to counter that. I'm not necessarily agreeing or disagreeing with you. I'm just going to say uh -huh. that this is the age-old thing you always have to think about. It is the team of five veterans versus a team of four rookies. S Sniper, uh, Meech and quid there it is have never been in playoffs ever literally never and they have to play against cloud nine the perennial best team in the league it's like playoff veterans people who've done it time and time again who've always found a way to clutch it always found a way to make it to finals right literally the people on cloud nine they don't miss a finals they don't miss msi and they're gonna have to play against 100 Thieves, who is four rookies, essentially, right? Ayla has been in, like, one or two playoff series in his entire career, right? Everybody else on, on 100 Thieves has not. Like, River is the only tenured guy who's actually done it all and, and been on a bunch of different playoff series and rosters. So it if we were to take in a vacuum, right, the fact that... Actually, you know what helps 100 Thieves? Is they're not going to be playing in front of a big crowd. They're just playing in the studio, right, in the... I don't even know if it's in the back room or not, but if it's in the back room, it actually helps 100 <laughs> Thieves more, I think. Yeah. But like, if it was ever a setting where 100 Thieves is, hey, this is playoffs and you're playing in front of a crowd and it's going to be a bit higher pressure, that's where you see choking. That's where you see the inconsistency of being a rookie and never having playoffs under your belt. Um, but they got to be a little lucky, right? If we go back three, four years and you know playoffs is being played in a big uh, stage with like a lot, the, a, a packed LCS arena. Then yeah, you know, I could say it's gonna sniper's gonna feel some nerves. He's gonna make a couple more snakes than he already does. But maybe that doesn't affect him as much this 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 time around because it's the situation LCS is in. So mm -hmm. that's just something I wanna bring up um to think about. I'm actually gonna go cloud nine. I'm actually gonna do it. We're gonna disagree. And I'm After just last week. All right, man. Yeah. I just think that regular season is different for veteran players, right? It's like it we've is. been saying it for years and years. Regular season for media or regular season for impact is different than playoff impact. It's the same for every single player on Cloud9, okay? Vulcan has looked like shit all split long. And yet I know he's gonna pick it up in playoffs because he's done it like a bajillion times. Same thing with uh Blabber, same thing with Fudge, honestly. As much as I don't like Fudge, it's just going to be true. He's going to pick it up in playoffs. He always does. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go Cloud9, and I think I'm going to go I'm gonna go 3-2. Mostly because I think this is, I think 100 Thieves will have a lot to show, though. Because they are the better player. I think they're going to play worse, because the pressure is going to hit. I genuinely do. And I think Cloud9 is going to play better, because the pressure is going to hit. And yet, if you were to put them in a vacuum, yeah, I think 100 Thieves is the better team, obviously. But there you go. Okay. All right, so that's our predictions. Um... Oh, I guess we kind of have to do the lower bracket. Is that in the schedule? Let me see. Yeah, we have to do the lower bracket because we won't do a podcast between then. So uh, Energy versus Dignitas. We're just going to relatively say, because we're at the end and because we chose differently, right? We chose who would advance and who wouldn't play them. Um, do you think Energy has a chance 
at taking it against is it is it gonna be loser of hundred thieves versus cloud nine? I think it is. I can actually I'm tell. Assuming that. the bracket works the way it looks like it does, it doesn't say yeah. TBD oh, no, no. one, TBD two though. So it's hard. So to okay. On this. Well, let's just say this. Do you think energy beats whoever loses in the upper bracket, right? Whether it's FlyQuest TL, hundred thieves, or I cloud nine. I think they play hundred thieves C nine because hundred thieves C nine go first. So the first game of the lower bracket should be spaced out, right? So it's not back to back days versus a two day gap. Um, so to me, it, it's the winner of 100 Thieves C9, right? And for me, okay. I think 100 Thieves will play. Uh, so C9 goes down. I think C9 probably beats NRG in their current state. Wow. Uh, actually, no. I, no, no, I take that back. I actually still think our NRG, if we're talking about veteran luck and veteran okay. skill and, you know, poise and everything, NRG, when it matters, like, is the scariest team, in my mm-hmm. opinion, still. And this, uh, I, who he's the only X Factor that I'm a little worried about. But no, I, I think NRG would just... Am I betting on C9 just double bombing out of playoffs? That's so odd. No, yeah, not, I'm going with it. It's place. crazy, but that's yeah. that's the first thought I actually had. So I'm going with it. Okay. Okay. Well, respect. Respect. Just a little C9 hate. You know, most of our fans are C9 fans. So <laughs> I know. I own a C9 yeah. jersey. Yeah, that's I how you do. That's time. right. I lost a bet yeah. against yeah. C Knight. I still remember. <laughs> Hell yeah, you did. I mean, hey, respect. You're still voting it against them because I'm going to say if C9 drops, I think C9 beats Energy. I honestly do. If 100 Thieves drops, I think now we're talking. I think if 100 Thieves drops to C9, it's uh-huh. because the nerves hit. And I think if that's the reason they're losing, then Energy is going to beat them too. Okay. But here's here's something that I want to say personally. Okay, I'm not a hundred thieves hater. I actually want hundred thieves to just win the whole split. Okay, but I'm gonna doubt them because they have not proven to me that they can do it in the playoffs. All right, but as soon as they prove it to me, they can do it in the playoffs, and I get that feeling that they still have that that sort of the vibes that they have in the regular season as they do in playoffs. I'm gonna start ruining them from the probably because this is probably my favorite team. I just think realistically, like it's just it's just so hard against go to go against Cloud9 your first ever series your first ever best of in your entire life right in LCS yeah. playoffs so and we doubt them every time not every time we doubt them very often and they yeah. do not bomb out anymore <laughs> yeah it's been yeah. like 5 I'm... years since they're like or 4 years since they're like terrible s- streak Cloud9 just hasn't actually ever bombed out right i think the worst they've gotten is fourth place recently like in the last yeah. 4 years yeah. is yeah. fourth place barely not make like like losing a five game series to not make it to worlds type of thing. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. And then for Dignitas, I'm just going to be straight up. I don't think they're going to be anybody who drops down. I just don't think mm-hmm. it's happening. I think nope. they'll put on a good show though. I think Dignitas I'm, I'm ha- never shows up um, in this in playoffs ever, never, ever, yeah. ever. However, yeah. honestly good for them. They actually had a roster that didn't look like a complete shit show. And we were clowning on them at the beginning. Yeah. They're a, like a fifth, six, whatever, but like, it's not a bad fit six, honestly. It's Mm-mm. like one of those like this is a respectful one. Like, yes, they built a roster. They didn't coach them like dog, and they played like fine. I'm not angry if they like do well, but I don't expect it. I just don't think they'll look bad if they you know lose. No, I don't think they'll look when bad either. I, I yeah, when they lose, I think that like honestly, their draft is pretty decent. Their macro and team play is pretty decent. Their team fight is pretty decent. The only thing that holds them back is a little player skill, player diff here and there, getting caught out a little bit here and there. It's a respectable team. I like this team. It's a lot of new players and a lot of new faces, and they're able to put this together on such a bottom tier org. Yeah, hard to complain. I'm actually weird to say it. We're glad to see. I'm glad that honestly, Dignitas and Immortals don't look like crap this year. Like honestly, they looked pretty good. Good considering how they usually look. Right? They mm-hmm. usually are at the bottom of the standings, and they look like completely worthless. Like just don't. You're wasting our time watching. That's not the case at all this year. That was not even close to the case. So, all right. Well, that's going to do it for this. That was a long episode. But, yeah, this is super week. Lots of stuff to talk about. Lots of interesting things with the teams. Anything else you want to talk about before we close it out, Kevin? Um, No, not too much. I think that's that's about it for this week, actually. Okay, we covered yeah. everything. I'm excited for playoffs. We benefited from a way higher average, as you mentioned at the end. A lot of the weaker teams look good. Like, yeah. they looked fine. They They fought hard and honestly we also mentioned this before lck has the excuse that they're playing from home or whatever for a bit but there's a lot of clown fiestas everywhere i think the yeah. item balance as well as the characters like smolder warping the meta uh mm. are really making things fiesta and i'm okay with fiestas i'm just mm. saying that like if you watch other leagues and i haven't had as much time this year it's not that 
we're not that bad in terms of our yeah, gameplay. No, I, I think we look better than EU, for sure. I've been watching LEC, and I think we by far look better than the LEC on average. So let's go. Energy still taking dubs over and or over EU. Okay, that's going to close it out for us tonight, all right? Um, have a good couple of days. We'll see you next week. Try not to be too toxic. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace.